In this video, we'll be exploring how to streamline your motion graphics workflow by creating a motion graphics template in the Essential Graphics panel inside of Adobe After Effects. Then we'll edit that template inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Motion graphics templates help eliminate the need to bounce back and forth between After Effects and Premiere Pro. This is especially helpful when working on projects where you have to create multiple versions of a graphic, like Lower Thirds, or the title open in an episodic show series. In fact, for this video, we'll be working on the title open for a hypothetical episodic show series called Claim Jumper. If you want to follow along, you can download the assets that accompany this tutorial. We'll be starting our project in After Effects, and we'll use the Essential Graphics panel to control exactly what elements will be editable in Premiere Pro. Now I have a designer I've been working with who sent me this After Effects project and I need to figure out exactly how to make changes to it. We'll be able to customize this title to whatever we want inside of After Effects or Premiere Pro. So I'm gonna press the space bar to stop playback and just move my current time indicator back to frame 114, just so we're all on the exact same frame. Now I'll select layer one and press Shift Command T or Shift Control T to open the effect controls panel for that layer. I clicked on this layer because it was called Expression Controls, and Expression Controls actually happen to be very special because these are custom controls that you can apply to any layer in your After Effects project and link those controls to any parameter on any layer in your project so that you have all of the important controls in one panel that makes it very easy to access and update changes. So I want you to go to the graphic style slider here and click on the slider and drag it all the way to the right to change its value up to six. And you'll notice the title has a completely different title design now. The graphic style controls how the title appears. Now, if you're an experienced After Effects user, you might be very familiar with expression controls. But what happens if you need to send this project off to another less experienced designer? Or what if you want to send it to an editor and give them the ability to make version changes and key element adjustments without having them repeatedly come back to you for each little change? Well, that's where the Essential Graphics panel comes into play. Let's open the Essential Graphics panel by changing our workspace. I'll go up under the Window menu and go to Workspace and go down and choose Essential Graphics. I can also use the shortcuts here in the upper right corner of the interface. You'll notice I've already added a bunch of different sliders into the Essential Graphics panel. So let me show you how I did that. Now the first time you open the Essential Graphics panel, it'll usually be empty. So what you want to do is name the template you're about to create. I called mine Claim Jumper Show Title. Then you want to come to the next drop down menu and click on it. Here you'll see a list of all the different compositions available in your project. You want to choose the one composition you want to use as your master composition. This is where you'll set up all the controls. So I chose the Claim Jumper Title Comp. Next, you'll want to click the next button down, Solo Supported Properties. When you do that, any property that you could possibly add into the Essential Graphics panel is now revealed in your timeline. And it's not just one layer, it's any layer. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom to my text layer here and I want to add source text as something that I'd like to be able to change because in Premiere I want to change this from episode title into the words claim jumper. So instead of clicking on text here I'm going to click on the word source text and then I'll click and drag that right up into my essential graphics panel. And notice I get a blue line wherever I'm going to go ahead and drop this. So I can drop this anywhere in the hierarchy. I'm going to drop it all the way to the top. And notice once it's added here, I can title what the parameter is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and change it from source text to title text. And then just click on the next parameter down and you'll notice that's gone ahead and set that. If you want to delete something out of the Essential Graphics panel, just click on it and press delete on your keyboard. You can also add comments. So I'll go ahead and add a comment. I'll add the comment, use each background only once. 
And notice this is background tint color, but this comment pertains to the background image. So I'm gonna click on this parameter and drag it up directly underneath the background image. And now my comment is directly below the background image. Now that we've added our comment, we're ready to export our motion graphics template. To do that, I'll just click the export motion graphics template button. And it's going to tell me I need to save my project first. I'll go ahead and click save. And then it's gonna go ahead and package all the different graphic elements that this project references. And it's going to ask me where I'd like to save this. Now, if I click on the drop-down menu under destination, it's important to note that I could save this to a local drive or I could save it out to my Creative Cloud. In this case, I'm gonna save it to Creative Cloud in my library. And so when I click OK, it's gonna take a second to copy everything up to the cloud. Then we can jump over into Premiere Pro. Now, once we're in Premiere Pro, I just wanna call your attention to one thing. To use a motion graphics template in Premiere Pro that was created in After Effects, you must either install a current trial version of After Effects or install it as a part of your existing Creative Cloud membership. If you install a trial version, the feature will continue to work even after the trial is expired as long as it remains installed. Now, if we look at our project, under Sequence 1, you'll notice I already have a placeholder where I'd like to place my title. So I'll click over to the Graphics Workspace to reveal the Essential Graphics panel, where I can browse to the Motion Graphics template that I just saved to my library. You can also get to the graphics workspace by selecting it from the window menu. Now let's take a second to check out the essential graphics panel. Notice it's divided up into browse and edit. We'll start in the browse section and if I click on the next drop down menu, you notice I have essential graphics and libraries. Essential graphics contain a bunch of pre-built templates that you can use in any of your upcoming projects. I'm gonna to go to the Libraries section because I wanna navigate in my libraries, which are on my Creative Cloud, to my library where I actually saved our template. To add this to my project, all I need to do is just drag it and drop it, and I can place it directly over top of my placeholder. When I let go, it's gonna take a second to download a copy of this file into my project. Once it's been added into the sequence, I can browse the animation by scrubbing my playhead down the timeline. I'll scrub to 7 seconds, 8 frames. Now let's look at how we can edit this title in the Essential Graphics panel. Go ahead and click once on the graphic that we just added into the sequence. And now I can see the sliders in the Essential Graphics panel. Let's rename our title from Episode Title to Claim Jumper. Click anywhere outside of the text box to set the type. If we take a closer look at the subtitle, you'll notice it's kind of hard to read. Let's see if we can fix that by changing the background image. In the Essential Graphics panel, I'll go to the BG Image slider and change its value from 3 to 1. It's still kind of hard to read, so I'll scrub on the title Y position. Notice if I drag to the right, the title moves down. And if I drag to the left, the title moves up. Let's drag it up until we can see the type just above the wagon. That way the black will pop against the nice light blue background. Now once we've stylized this, it's important to understand how to create an alternate version. Whenever you add a template to the timeline, all you have to do is create a duplicate of the sequence or a duplicate of the graphic on the timeline itself. Then when you make changes to the graphic in the Essential Graphics panel, it'll update just for that duplicate copy, giving you multiple versions. To show you what I mean, I'll go to the Project panel and I'll select Sequence 1 and right click and choose Duplicate. I'll rename this Sequence 02 and double click to open Sequence 02. I can click once on my Claim Jumper title and in the Essential Graphics panel, Notice everything opens up. For this version, I'll choose a slightly different background color for the tint. So click once in the color well next to background tint to open up our color picker. And this time I'll choose kind of a dark burnt orangey brown color. And if I go back to sequence 01, I have my nice blue tint. So as you can see, Motion graphics templates can help designers cut down on revisions and versioning work while still maintaining creative control over their projects. And editors can continue to work quickly without having to break focus by switching apps 
or having to send revisions back to a designer to make changes. 